When it came to addressing the idea of the score for the game, um, we knew that because it was a historical kind of alternate history game that we wanted to have an authenticity to the sound that you know had um, the allure of kind of the Victorian era, but at the same time, we didn't want to feel like we were kind of trapped or, or painting ourselves into a corner. Just like the visuals seem like they could have happened you know, in that time, but didn't quite, the music should feel the same way. We thought about things like, you know, kind of augmenting instrumentation or kind of taking things and making them sound a little bit more uncomfortable than they normally would. Um, and also kind of trying to bring some of that industrial feel into it um, that wouldn't have been something that musically would have been appreciated at the time period. Music is an absolutely essential part of, of the experience in, in every way. The sound of the game is just as unique as the visual. It has its own identity that, that was very important for us from the beginning, especially for a game like this that has such a unique, you know, unique look and unique feel to it. Yeah, you need to find someone that can not only understand, you know, the cinematic part, but the game part as well. For me, inspiration for music comes really easy with games. One of the things that I love to do is visit the developer before I start writing any music. That means that I can immerse myself in the world that they've already been in for at least a year. So there's concept art and playthroughs, meeting the people. There was no lack of inspiration from the team at, at all. So for our game, the score was something that I think really we, we kind of wanted something that had um, an air of kind of historical nature to it. You want it to feel like it's kind of period-esque. Given the time period that the game's set in, we're in the late 19th century, it seemed appropriate to have the full orchestral complement of live musicians, but we were very careful to keep it as authentic in terms of the acoustic instruments as possible. Everything's recorded live and everything's performed in real time. We wanted the musicians, the live breathing musicians, to really contribute that sense of emotion and weight to the score. Even our choice in recording studios played a prominent role in the sound of the overall score. We're here at Abbey Road and Abbey Road has a beautiful Studio One, but we've chosen Studio Two, which is the a smaller studio, and it has a really punchy, warm weight to it. This is a big game, and it needed, it needed a musical score that matched the scope and the scale of, of the visuals and of the vision. If I had to choose one word to describe the music for the order, it would probably be weight. We wanted there to be this, like, this weight that is on all the characters, so that the world and the society at the time feels this burden of what's going on between you know, the knights and the half-breeds. When I'm first starting a project, the instrumentation is really the place that I like to start. And it's not even about what instruments I'm choosing, but what instruments I'm not choosing. One of the things that I thought would make this score stand apart from others is we have absolutely no brass. There's no heroic French horns or low, powerful trombones. There are essentially no high woodwinds. Uh, there are like several bass clarinets, several contrabassoons, and bassoons. They provide this like low growl. And another big aspect of it is the voices. We have a choir, which is 24 men, of course. No sopranos, no altos, no tenors either. So we essentially took the low 25% of the choir and extended it even lower. We really kind of take it down. We get very, very kind of low bassy voices and stuff like that that make it creepy. And we get kind of like this strained groaning kind of sound out of some of the performances that when you see it in context with what's going on, it's, it's very disturbing sounding. I can smell you. 
the biggest challenge, I think, as a game composer, is to come up with a, a sound for the game that is specific and unique to that franchise. That was something I really wanted to do for The Order, where you could hear 10 seconds of music, and you could say, that's from The Order, and it doesn't sound like any other game. Not just the thematic material, but just the, the orchestral colors that, that were chosen are, are very particular and very unique. Just hearing that theme, you know what that hero's experience, what the character's experiencing, and where the game is taking you. To get a really well-crafted sound with all the elements that we're talking about, whether it's the score, or the ambient sound from the environment, or the weapons, or people, the idea of everything having its own space. Different elements kind of own their range, and then there's a certain clarity that comes from them. People can go, oh, I can kind of take it all in, and maybe they're not really you know, focused on any individual part, but it all makes sense, and everything is kind of coming from a place where, you know, to our ears, fits. We want something that people haven't heard before. We want a, an imprint. We want a, a sonority that people hear it and instantly think that's, that's the sound of the order. We've actually used Tesla as one of our main points of contact in the game. He provides weaponry, he provides devices that he invents, sometimes based on actual real things that he's done. PlayStation.